Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome down to the waterfront. I'm Mayor Emma Mulvaney Stanek, and it's great to celebrate not only this beautiful day, but why we've gathered here today for this amazing um, addition to our commitment to uh, accessibility and equity and making sure that our beautiful outdoors um, as a city are able to be enjoyed by everybody. So we're here to celebrate the installation of the first in the city tactile wayfinding sign that will help everyone, but specifically those with visual impairments, better navigate our beautiful waterfront park. A lot of people were excited and interested in being part of this project, and it's taken a lot to get us here today. The process involved presentations to and reviews by the Burlington Advisory Committee on Accessibility, a field meeting at the waterfront to review and finalize the location, multiple design reviews with the city and the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, V-A-B-I-B-V-I, -B 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 -I, that's probably a cooler way to say that acronym, apologies, um, their staff, and a test print for which was reviewed by the, a Braille interpreter to ensure that all the tactile components were accurate. All of this collaboration reflects the inclusive values of our community here in Burlington. This project is one of the many planning efforts to address barriers to accessibility in our parks while small in stature, its impact will be big. What other projects that have started to address access in our parks include the Oak, Oak Ledge for All Playground, which my kids love, by the way, the soon-to-be-completed Champlain Street Park, and Active Parks for All campaign by the Burlington Parks Foundation, which seeks to raise funds and to make all Burlington playgrounds accessible for all. The city's park planning team also has been working with the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission on an accessibility study of city parks, which will wrap up later this summer. The latter will identify any circulation challenges with getting to and into city parks and propose solutions for those, those issues. I'm very proud of and grateful for the positive contrib uh, collaboration and contributions that went into creating this sign and look forward to continuing this valuable work, valuable work to make sure our parks and city are more accessible for all members of our community. Because let's remember, when we make things more equitable and inclusive, it benefits all of us, not just folks um, who, in this case, are visually impaired. So, so glad to celebrate with all of you, and I think there's more folks to come. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Steve Cooley. I'm the Executive Director of Vermont Association for the Blind Visually Impaired. We're an agency that was formed back in 1926, and we have four offices and cover the whole state. We have our main office in South Burlington, then other satellite offices in Berlin, Brattleboro, and Rutland. A little bit higher. Oh, sorry, a little bit higher. And we serve people of all ages who are blind or visually impaired. Our mission is simple, to enable Vermonters who are blind or visually impaired to be more independent, cultivate adaptive skills, and to improve their quality of life. We do not charge our clients for these services. We currently serve about 1,500 people a year in the state. It's estimated there are about 15,000 visually impaired Vermonters. That number is expected to double to about 30,000 within the next 15 years. As you know, Vermont is an uh, aging state. A lot of the baby boomers are entering that time where they're more apt to have vision problems. And we have a variety of services. We have daily living skills for, with our rehabilitation specialists. We have children's services with our TVIs who works with them at the schools. Orientation mobility, that's the white canes you might see a few of around here today or in your neighborhood so they can safely navigate. We have peer support groups so they can talk to one another and see you know, what is happening uh, you know, with others because they feel at times like they're the only one who has a vision problem. We also have a volunteer driver's program for those who need it and have no other means of transportation. And our newest program is the SMART program which deals with electronic and telecommunications technologies such as iPhones, iPads, echo speakers, artificial intelligence, and other devices. And this is so important these days. There are so many accessible apps that you can put onto these devices, and our folks didn't know how to use them. This really came out when COVID hit, and all of a sudden, they were really isolated. Everyone experienced self-isolation. Our clients had it before, and they're going to have it after if they don't get this training. So we're very pleased to add that this made a big difference for hundreds and hundreds of people who have taken advantage of this so far. So accessibility is important to us, and it's a big impact on those that have a sensory loss. This includes people with a vision loss or hearing or even their sense of smell. 
Can you imagine, if you close your eyes, try to imagine, how would you experience this waterfront if you can't see it? Or plug your ears and leave your eyes open. How can you experience, we, we wouldn't hear any boats leaving, tooting of the horns, birds, people, different world. If you were to close both your eyes and your ears, how would you be able to experience anything at all at this location? Well, this signage is gonna make a big difference. It will provide them with the ability to access information about the waterfront. For vision, there is both large print on the sign as well as braille. For those who have a vision or hearing loss, or both, they can scan the QR code that will be on the sign and they can access the information electronically, having it read to them through their smart devices. This will provide an enriching, inclusive experience for everyone who visits the waterfront, regardless of what their level of sensory access might be. So we hope that this will be a model that could and should be emulated across the city and even our state. It's a good example of what should be done. So I'd like to thank the mayor and the Burlington Parks and Rec for working with us and seeing this project through to fruition. You have shown that Burlington feels that inclusivity for everyone in the community is a goal that we must work towards. So thank you. And now, sir. Good afternoon, I'm Cindy White. I'm the Director for Parks, Recreation and Waterfront and welcome to our amazing Waterfront Park. Uh, whoever was in charge of the weather, thank you very much. It's a glorious day today. So I get to talk to you a little bit about some of the behind the scenes, um, how this came to be. So we have a program, a funding program called Penny for Parks. And this was voter approved back in, I believe it was maybe 2001, 2002. We'll, we'll make a number up there, but it was approved by the voters and it's a cent on the grand list. So it's money that we can put into our parks to improve them. And we think we have a lot of great ideas on the parks and recreation side. We have a master plan that also guides our work, but we don't have all the ideas. The community also has many ideas. And so we've set aside money every year. We call them our Penny for Parks community requests. And people put those community requests in. We review them around October, November. We make a decision internally on what we think are the top projects. And then our Parks Commission eventually is the one that does the final approval. So how fortunate we were that John from Vabby showed up in our world with this amazing idea. John submitted a Penny for Parks request for this map. It's the perfect example of what the community request and that money set aside was supposed to be for. So our team, uh, Max uh, Madelinski, who's over here to my left, um, is our project manager that oversees that Penny for Parks program. And he worked with John, and he didn't have to do a lot of work in the beginning because John's proposal was so well thought out. He had brought in a national recognized firm that was gonna do this work as far as the design. So John made our, our work very easy to get to a quick yes and the Parks Commission also approved it. But from there, that was about January 23 is when our Parks Commission gave the approval. And then John and Max and the rest of the team got to work. How was this, this was a concept, and then how were we gonna put that concept into action? So this is our first, and I would very much say it's our first tactile sign in our park, but it is certainly not our last tactile sign in our park. Because as somebody noted, this sign benefits everybody. If you were coming down to Waterfront Park for the first time and you've never been here, you don't know that there's a fishing pier all the way out on the other end of the park. You may never go down to the fishing pier. You might have taken the shuttle down, taken in our glorious views, especially for the sunset, but you might not have walked down to the rest of the park, seen our incredible, uh, well-known skate park. So again, the map here benefits everybody. I'd like to do a few special thank yous. Um, one, especially to John from Babby, who um, was just a delight to work with. Um, he communicated early and often with us, made it a very simple process. Um, a special thank you to Max, um, who again, I had noted before, a project manager for this, who oversees that program, really works carefully with every citizen that puts in a request to make sure that by the time that request gets to the review team, that they've had their best chance, put their best foot forward with the request. Um, I want to thank our uh, waterfront and our parks team because they took the efforts for the installation of the sign. Um, that is, I know we've got Aaron, who is our waterfront superintendent here, Alec from our campground. Um, I think the rest of the parks team is probably very actively working out in our parks right now. And an overall thank you too to our planning team. Sophie is 
and John are here somewhere. Where are they? Oh, they're hiding out over in the back over there. Sophie is our parts comprehensive planner, uh, parts comprehensive planner. Um, and John is one of our parks project managers. John's been with the um, city for many, many years and provides a lot of uh, historical knowledge for us and also just some really very creative thinking when we approach these types of projects. Um, so again, this might be our first, but it's certainly not our last. And we really encourage folks to think about these community requests. If you see something in our parks that you think would be a great addition, um, that is on our website, the link for that. Reach out to us. Um, we'd love to support you in putting in an application um, for our next round in 2024. And next, I have Nate. All right. Where would you like to go, Nate? Where would you like to go? Yeah, where would you like to go? Hello, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. All right, well, I would just like to echo what everybody said. What a gorgeous day for this celebration. We had a lot of rainy weather the past couple days. I'm really glad it cleared up. So my name is Nate Bizzio. I am the chair of the Burlington Advisory Committee on Accessibility. I also work for the Vermont Center for Independent Living, which is a advocacy agency for all people with disabilities. Um, the goal of the Burlington Advisory Committee is to seek, provide feedback to the mayor's office, the different departments and the city legislature about what we see as being accessibility issues and ways that can be improved. The really important part about this committee is it tries to provide the feedback from the perspective of the people with disabilities. We try to have as many people representing those disabilities to provide their feedback because the only way a place can be truly accessible is to hear from those who need the accessibility. And this tactile sign is a fantastic example. Um, in many ways, the, um, the organizations could have just rubber stamped it, put the sign up and put it somewhere, but they did not do that. They reached out to our committee to see our, seek our feedback. We brought people down to where the tactile sign would be placed. We listened to feedback about how best that people could find out about this tactile sign. It was a very collaborative effort, and that is really what we need to make the city more accessible. And um, as I've stated, this is a great, great part, a great addition, and, um, but we need to do more. And we need to have more tactile signs like this. We need to have more accessibility. We need to have the different departments and areas of the city come listen to the committee. And we need more people with disabilities to help out on the committee, to provide their feedback. Because it's the only way that people are gonna be heard is if they let their voices heard. So I'm really excited about this project. Um, it's great, it's gonna provide a lot of help to a lot of people, and I look forward to working with all the various parties um, on future projects in, in the future. I, I really don't have anything else to say, so thank you everybody. Thank you, Nate. Tom. Tom is up next, he's at the VABV board. I think. <laughs> that's what my notes say. How about that? Yeah, you can make it up, though. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't tell me when. They said you're last. <laughs> they said they save the best for last, though, right? Yeah, 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 of course. And then everybody's gone already. Now. <laughs> Too so, beautiful a day for that. I think if it was raining, you might have been, uh, but now everyone's away so, from their desks. So where am I going here? Do you want right to over the here. Podium or just oh, the podium. The podium's good. Okay. Podium's good. So right in front of... You reach out your arm. Yeah. Right there. Right, there's the button. I go on the other side, I assume. Well, oh, actually, you stay behind. Go to, your, go to your right. I can't go behind it. You, you gotta lock the these side. things. <laughs> it's rolling my rollator, <laughs> and he's very re gregarious. <laughs> and he likes to go visiting people, so you gotta tell him to stop. Okay. And I have, I'm holding in front of you the. You're, you're right at the edge of it? Uh-huh. I'm you're right there. here. I'm right here. Here's your microphone. Uh-huh. There's the, there's the mic. There's the microphone. Okay. Anyway, I'm Tom Frank. Actually, I live in Milton. Uh, used to work at the Social Security on Pearl Street there, so I would sometimes come down this area. And the problem when you're visually impaired is you don't know what's there. And I remember once my, my wife asked me, did you have any peas? I said, well, I didn't know there were any peas on the table. 
Why didn't you ask? What was I going to ask? Are there, is there corn on there? Is there succotash? Are there pea? I don't know. So you don't know what you don't know. So I'll have to try this out, the sign. I don't know what's everything down here. I've walked it. Uh, I've gotten lost. <laughs> and that's one thing I want to point out. They're talking about the sign. They're talking about the services. I want to talk to you. If you happen to see a guy with a white cane sort of looking around up in the sky and he looks lost, ask my son. He'll say, you don't know where you are, do you? <laughs> and I say, he knows the symptoms. So just offer a hand. Whoops. I think a present had a problem with one of these things, right? Yeah. So just ask, offer a help. And they, if somebody's around here and you say visually impaired, by the way, we've got a sign that you might like. It's a Braille sign, and if like me, they say they don't, I don't read Braille. Well, it's also raised line, so it's a map of the area, and you'd be glad. And there's a QR code, and as Steve mentioned, that's what's in my pocket. My iPhone, don't worry, I'll be reading that QR code. So, it's just wonderful, and everybody, I'm glad to hear everybody had worked together, and it's a team. I got SSTA here. They dropped me off. I went into the Echo Center, and I said, I need to uh, prepare to be out here for an hour or two. And she said, it's right this way, sir. Okay. And then the woman, I don't know who she is, she offered to bring me over here. So it's a team. Accessibility isn't just a Braille sign. It isn't just uh, uh, something on a computer or a piece of technology. It's all of us together and working together to make everything accessible for everybody. And on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, I really thank you all for making this park a little bit more accessible. Thank you. Okay. Now, where's Ro where'd Roland go? Well, I got that slide up for you. Okay. There he is. All right. I think I'd like to thank everybody again for coming out. Um, I did one more uh, thank you that I forgot earlier. Um, there's always a little magic behind the scenes um, that makes it so that everybody shows up from the press, that our materials that we put out look really nice. I'd like to thank Jules Juliet Chen, who is our marketing manager. Um, a few guys probably follow us on Instagram. Our numbers exploded with Jules taking over that uh, that position for us, and we're really out there. And I would imagine this will be one of we'll see. If you want to see us on Instagram, check us out. I'm sure she'll have a great post for today. Um, but again, thank you everybody uh, for coming out today. This is again, as we note, this is our first tactile sign, but it is certainly not our last tactile sign that we'll be having in our parks. Oh, and we're going to unveil the sign. That's the important part. <laughs>